If you're looking to start selling online, but you're not entirely sure how to start or what to start, then you stumbled across the right video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about six different e-commerce examples that you can start right now. Now, I'm pretty sure everyone knows that nowadays, absolutely everything is online from ordering different services to ordering pretty much any product that you can all the way to ordering even groceries. If you're looking for it, you can find it online. These six different business examples that I'm about to give you are probably some of the easier ones to start. And best of all, they're some of the easier ones to scale. So if you're looking to start a business from the ground up and actually put in work to be able to scale it and ultimately make some pretty good money off of it, then make sure you watch this video all the way through. Now, the first e-commerce business that we're going to talk about is going to be wholesaling and warehousing. Now, this is actually probably one of the easier ones because all you need is a little bit of space in your house or wherever it is that you're living. What this business model consists of is ordering products in bulk and keeping them stored away for whenever you get an order. Now, you can choose to sell directly to customers or you can even sell them at wholesale prices to retailers around your area or throughout the country or wherever it is that you're selling in. Now, some of the good things about this is the fact that one, you can pretty much choose absolutely any product that you want as long as there's the demand for that product, people are going to be ordering it and stores are going to be ordering it too. You can save a lot of money by simply buying in bulk. When you purchase one item, it's probably going to be marked up almost double, triple, or even four times the price. When purchasing in bulk, you will be getting some pretty deep wholesale discounts. Now, another awesome thing about being able to carry your own inventory is the fact that you can easily access and you can easily control all of your inventory. So you know how much you have on hand. So whenever your inventory reaches zero, you know to stop selling them. A lot of the times when you're purchasing from different suppliers, you don't know how much they have on hand and there's always the possibility that you're going to get an order place it with your supplier and then your supplier is going to tell you sorry i don't have any more storing your own inventory can really help avoid that now while wholesaling and warehousing is a great business model to start it also you need to make sure that you need to order some so that way you don't run out also you need to think about the fact that you are going to be paying up front for all of this inventory so when you decide to purchase 30 of a particular product you're gonna have to pay for all 30 of those products and on top of that you might also have to pay for shipping which when you ship in bulk it can get pretty pricey now, at the same time, you also do need to figure out your own logistics and your own shipping system. Since you are going to be shipping out the products yourself, you're going to have to start purchasing packaging, packaging materials such as tape, peanuts, boxes, paper for sending out invoices or receipts in the boxes. And all of that is going to end up cutting into your profit margin. And one of the worst things that can happen when you are storing your own inventory can be the potential surplus of goods. Quite some time ago, I started to sell some phone cases and I ordered a lot of them. And when I say a lot, I mean, I ordered a lot. I accidentally ended up ordering too many and I stayed with more than half of the inventory. That was all dead inventory that is no longer going to move because those phone models are old. They're history at this point. So I'm stuck with dead products that I'm never going to sell and I lost that money. Now, of course, with a proper inventory management system and being aware of how much you're actually selling and how much you're purchasing, you can avoid these different problems. But it's always worth mentioning both the advantages and the disadvantages because at the end of the day, it's very possible to go down the wrong route and go through the wrong business model and get discouraged because of how many problems you face. So it's good to know what you could potentially go through before you actually go through it. Next up, we have manufacturing and white labeling. And this is actually one of my favorites because I think this is an absolutely awesome way to be able to brand yourself and brand your products. So when you're manufacturing and white labeling, you're going to be working with manufacturers that are going to be able to customize your products. So they can customize it with your colors, your brand name, they can customize the packaging, and they can even customize the item itself. One awesome thing about being able to brand your own products is the fact that you can sell them at higher marked up prices. People are going to be paying more for brand name products rather than generic products, even if they don't know that brand all that well. Now, when you are creating your own brand and when you're customizing your items, that of course is going to end up coming with a higher price tag. While you can't sell them at higher prices, they're also going to be a bit more expensive for you to manufacture. But just like with any customized good, that's just going to be the norm. It's normal to pay extra for customized or personalized goods. Now, another thing that you need to watch out for is the fact that you can't get too complicated with certain things. So when you're working with some manufacturers, a lot of the times some people like to give them way too many specs and too many details on how they want a product to be. And when they receive it back, it's not going to be what they expect. While yes, you should always have high expectations for your products, especially if you're making your own brand, you also have to be realistic about things. Don't overly complicate your design. Don't overly complicate the instructions that you're giving these manufacturers, because a lot of the times these manufacturers are going to be located overseas, typically for the most part in China, which that in itself can create some sort of a language barrier. So try to keep it simple. Of course, keep it the way that you want it, but keep the instructions simple 
keep them clear and try not to overcomplicate it. Now, with that being said, the production process can potentially be a little bit longer. But of course, since we are customizing our products, that is to be expected. Now, when it comes time to actually fulfilling orders and sending out these products, you are going to have two different options. Sometimes you can have them drop shipped. So whenever somebody places an order, you place the order with your supplier and then they'll send them out and update you and your customer with the tracking number. But you also have the option to be able to keep inventory in house. Now, really quick before we continue, if you're finding this information helpful, if you're finding it useful, if you like it, please make sure you hit that like button and also make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Next up at number three, we have one of my favorite business models and that is drop shipping. Now, of course, most of us are going to know, but for those of you that don't, drop shipping is simply a fulfillment business model. You're simply just rerouting orders. So you're going to have your online store, whether that be on your own website like Shopify or on a platform like Etsy or eBay. Whenever you receive an order, you're going to go ahead and reroute that order directly to your supplier. So you're going to be placing the order with your supplier. They're going to take care of the shipping handling and they're going to update you with the tracking number once that's all done. At that point, it's up to you to notify your customer and the platform that you're selling on what that tracking number is. And you're pretty much done. It's all there is to it. You sell the product for $100 and you're sourcing it for $50. The remaining balance of $50 is your profit. That's so easy. Now with dropshipping, you do have quite a few different advantages. For one, it has a very low entry barrier. It's something that's extremely easy to get started in and it's fairly easy to scale as long as you do the proper research, put in the proper work and don't give up. It's something that's going to take some testing, but at the end of the day, it's worth it because it's something that you can really scale to end up becoming some sort of passive income. Aside from that, you don't have to worry about inventory. You're never going to have to have a room full of inventory. You're not going to be stuck with any dead products and you can do this from pretty much anywhere. As long as you have a laptop or even just a phone, you can get started dropshipping. Let's get started. Now, when it comes to dropshipping, one thing you do have to realize is the fact that your profit margins aren't going to be as big as, let's say, shipping out the item yourself because you are going to be a middleman and you are going to be working with another middleman that is going to cut into your profits. But let's be realistic. In my opinion, it's totally worth it for the simple fact that at the end of the day, you're not really doing much. You're just rerouting orders. Also, you are going to have some sort of limited control over your supplies and your quality. So always make sure to order a sample, read reviews on the seller and on the item itself. Itself. Make sure that people are happy with that particular product. So that way you can make sure that your customers are going to be receiving high quality products, because if they don't, more than likely you're going to get chargebacks, returns, and people are just not going to purchase at your store anymore. Another quick thing that I want to note about dropshipping is the fact that there's a lot of competition, but just like in any other business, there is going to be a lot of competition. The difference with dropshipping is the fact that it's so easy to actually get started. Everyone wants a piece of it. In order to be able to succeed in dropshipping, one of my personal recommendations is work on your marketing. Make sure you learn how to stay stand out and how to get noticed. Be unique and try hitting your marketing from different angles. Once people start to notice you, then it's just going to be all downhill from there. Now, one really big thing I do want to mention about dropshipping that I absolutely love is the fact that if you have a dropshipping business, you can benefit from automation. So take, for example, using AutoDS. Whenever we're in AutoDS, we have the option to automatically import any product that we want. And whenever we get an order, we can automatically fulfill that order as well. If our suppliers are running out of a particular item, AutoDS can detect that and adjust our inventory accordingly. Also, if you don't exactly know what to sell, AutoDS also offers a winning product section. On here, you're going to have tons of different items that are currently trending, have a proven track record, and it's all backed by data. So take, for example, this really cool lighter right here. So this is a little oil tank lighter. And let me show you something extra that AutoDS offers you. So in the winning product section, you get a little bit of extra analytics to be able to help you actually market your product. And it can give you more or less of an idea of how much you can make. So you get a profit analysis for one. So you can see that it's being sold for about $36.98 cents and you can source it for a measly seven dollars and 88 cents that gives you a profit potential of about 25 bucks that's not bad you also get an example facebook ad over here this facebook ad is actually currently running for this particular product as you can see the interactions are pretty good 6.4 thousand 228 comments and over 500 shares now if you want to get similar results to this facebook ad we also give you a target demographic example so let's say in this case it's geared towards both males and females between the ages of 25 and 50 with interests in vintage and retro aesthetics collectibles smoke smoking enthusiasts, outdoor activities, and a few more. Not only that, but if you want to learn how to be able to structure your own website to be able to sell this item, we also give you the link to a website that actually sells it. So as you can see, by using AutoDS, you can really start to learn how to get started in dropshipping, and you can use all of these different tools to your advantage to help you succeed. So let's say I actually want to import this product into my store. All I have to do is click on import draft. From there, it's going to go to my draft section where I can make any necessary adjustments. I can change the title. I can go ahead and add it to any collections if I'm selling it on Shopify. I can add any tags to it. I can change the shipping method and I can also change the description. Now, one cool thing is the description and the product title. You can optimize them with AI directly 
on the platform itself. Aside from that, you can also change the variance, which right on here, you can also go ahead and change the prices based on a few different factors. And you can add, edit, or delete any images as well. All of this from one single screen. Now, as you can see with dropshipping, automation can really help you out. It can really help you start to be hands off with your business. So that way you can start reinvesting your time into different aspects of this same business. Now, if you do want to check out AutoDS, you can get started right now for the trial period for just $1. Now, also, if you want everything that I'm talking about in a quick and easy to reference written format, I'm going to have a cheat sheet to go along with this video. If you want access to that, just go ahead and comment down below, hashtag e-commerce, and let me know which one of these e-commerce business models is your favorite. Once I see that you went ahead and did that, I'll go ahead and reply back with a link to the cheat sheet. Up next, we have print on demand. Now, print on demand consists of being able to customize a lot of different products with your own designs. Personally, I absolutely love print on demand. I think it's a really cool service. Basically, what it does is it gives you the option to be able to design your own products. So you can put your own designs on cups, mugs, mouse pads, shower curtains, shirts, shorts, hoodies, skateboards, posters, pretty much anything that you can think of, you can print on. Now, when it comes to print on demand, you of course don't have to take care of any inventory. Just like drop shipping, all you do is you place the order with your service provider and they take care of the rest. It also has very low startup costs. Really, all you have to do is pay for the item itself whenever you get an order. Now with print on demand, I do suggest that you test out different print on demand providers. Some might have better printing processes than others. So some products might have more vibrant colors. Some others might end up being a little bit blurry because of the printing process. So it's always best to check out the different printing services that you have, order a sample or two, and just see how it comes out. Now, just like dropshipping, print on demand also has some pretty high competition. So try to stand out with your designs, get unique designs. Don't try to sell designs that everyone is selling. Try to be unique, come up with your own. And again, try to stand out with your marketing. Up next in our number fifth spot, we have subscription services. Now a subscription service is not a one-time purchase. Purchase. Whenever somebody signs up for your subscription, they're going to be signing up to be charged recurring every single month, every single year, every single week, however it is that you have it set up. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can offer either a subscription service, so you can offer a service, or you can offer something like a monthly product. Now, when somebody signs up for your subscription, you can easily start to calculate or predict how much you're going to be making afterwards. As long as the customer stays subscribed to your service or your product, you're going to keep getting every single month or every single week that same amount of money. Now, if you provide an amazing service or an amazing product that people absolutely love and keep coming back for, you can be set for life with for life customers. There can be customers that are willing to pay years on end for whatever it is you're offering. But with that being said, at the same time, you also have to remember that if you're offering, let's say a product, you are going to have to be coming up with something new every single month, whether it be a new product or a new theme, whenever it comes time to offer that service or product, you have to make sure that you send them something different or something unique. Also, you have to be on top of your quality because your customers are going to expect the same quality if not better each and every time. So if you send out a great product one time and then the next time you send out a product that is either cracked or scratched or just doesn't really work, they're going to be pretty upset and they're probably going to end up emailing you, maybe asking for a refund or just asking for a replacement. And honestly, at that point, it's best to avoid all that. So just make sure you stay on top of your quality. And last but not least, you can start selling on online marketplaces such as Amazon or eBay. Now, when it comes to these two different marketplaces, you can very well just go ahead and go to a store, purchase a bunch of inventory and and sell it on those two marketplaces. The same way that you do that, you can also go to a garage sale, find some pretty valuable antiques and sell them on eBay. Selling on a marketplace gives you access to a huge demographic of people, pretty much anybody and everybody, especially if you're selling on eBay or Amazon, everyone buys on those two platforms. Now, one great thing about selling on a marketplace is the fact that you have organic traffic. So when it comes to your marketing, you don't have to spend a dime. You can, if you want to reach a wider audience, but realistically speaking, you don't have to actually spend any money to be able to market your products. As long as you're selling something that's trending, something that's unique, and something that offers some sort of value to your customers, people are going to be searching for it and people are going to be making the purchases. Also, people trust these marketplaces. Whenever somebody goes to Amazon or to eBay, they trust making their purchase because it's such a widely known platform. But because of that, there's also going to be a lot of competition. So again, as I keep mentioning, make sure you offer great products, take good pictures, present it well whenever you're showing it off in any pictures, and make sure you stand out with your marketing. Now, when you are selling on these types of platforms, one thing that you really do need to watch out for is going to be the different types of fees. Always research the different types of fees that they have and make sure you're not underpricing your items. So that way you're not losing out on money. Now, those are six different e-commerce business examples that you can get started in right now. Hopefully you found this video enjoyable. I know it was a pretty quick one, but this is something to really help you just get started in the e-commerce world. Remember that if you want everything that I talked about here, it's all going to be readily available to you in the form of a cheat sheet. And if you want access to that, just go ahead and comment down below, hashtag e-commerce, and let me know which one of these was your favorite. Huge thank you to all of you for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and you hit that like button 
button if you enjoyed this video so that way you don't miss out on any future videos. Once again, my name is Mario with AutoDS and I'll catch you guys next time.